What's going on everybody? It's Rocco with Rocco's Modern Survival. I'm back again with another video. It has been a while and I'm very sorry about that. A lot of stuff's been going on at the house um, with me and everything else. We uh, bought a truck uh, three months ago roughly and went and got the transmission because the transmission was going out on it already. And it, it was one of those bought as is um, from a Ford dealership. It was a Chevy at a Ford dealership. So I should have known all, already that it was bad. But um, we took it out to get a the transmission done on it, and the when they put it up on the lift, the lift started cracking the frame in two, so my truck was literally snapping in half. So that that happened um, two days ago. So we had to go buy a new car, and it's just been hectic ever since. And I've uh, been trying to get around to make a video, and it's just been super super busy for me. So I haven't been able to do it. But I want to talk to you today about mead. How to make your own mead. This is an alcohol based uh, substance and it uses honey instead of sugar. I don't like using sugar. I've tried it in um, my last batch I did, last two batches, because I made a really nice blueberry mead, which is what we are making today. All right. And um, so I used the blueberry mead, blueberries last time in one, the first batch I made. I used honey. It was amazing. I loved it. My, my family liked it. And they said, hey, if, I, if I'm making more, make some of that. Um, I made a watermelon lemonade one. It, I used sugar in that one instead of honey. It did not turn out good. It turned, I made it into a 30% alcohol. And it was just way too strong. I did not like the taste of it. And then I made a pineapple one with sugar. And it was just nasty. I did not like it either. Um, it was a 15% alcohol level in that one, which is not bad. It's really that's a really good alcohol level, but it just was too. <clears throat> it just wasn't good enough. You know, it just was not to my liking. So today we are going back to the basics. We're going to do a blueberry mead. So what for this you are going to need one pound of blueberries. I'm sorry, one pound of blueberries for a one gallon tall boy okay a gallon of water or half a gallon of water really because after you add in this and this with the three pounds of honey so for one gallon of uh mead you need three pounds of honey okay one pound of fruit okay i get the frozen fruit because i think it gives it a better flavor it helps jump start everything more it, it, I think it just, it tastes better that way, all right? It helps the yeast activate faster, and it gives, I just, I think it gives the yeast more more to grab onto. We also are going to be using a thing of yeast. I've got it right now activating in some water. It is just um, lukewarm water. It is not very hot, not very cold. It's just like right there. You do not want to go very high on the, hot on the yeast because you can kill it, all right? So do not forget that. Also, another thing. Everything that we use has been sanitized. This is all sitting in sanit sanitized water right now, okay? We have the sanitizer, which is this right here, okay? 10 star or 5 star, all right? This is what we use on our sanitation. Just a little bit in everything that you use. I sanitize the bottles. I sanitize the stuff the yeast is going inside. I sanitize my funnels, my um, bubblers, my turkey baster, because I, this is how I test the uh, alcohol level in it. All right, so anything that's going to touch those tall boys gets sanitized. My hands are sanitized. I even sanitize this right here. This is what I started my sanitizer in. This is the brush for the um, turkey baster, so it gets sanitized too. It just got really sanitized. We're actually just going to step it over here so it's not as sanitized because I don't need it right now. I just wanted to start it. Um, we're also going to sanitize the uh, um, the float, which tells you how much alcohol you have. I'm not sure what it's called right now. It's called the... Uh... There we go. It's called the hydrometer and glass test jar set for home brew. There we go. Um, this has everything you need in it. All right. It has the um, scale hydrometer, the clear glass cylinder jar, a stainless steel bottle brush, and hydrometer storage case. It is this right here. I absolutely love this thing. It tells you everything you need to know 
I'm just gonna go ahead and put it into the sanitizer so it can just be in there. Um, it tells you how to do everything. It tells you, hold on, I gotta open this up real quick. There we go, sorry. Uh, I need to open this up. It tells you how much alcohol percentage, uh, if I can get this to zoom, the, there we go. It tells you how much alcohol your brew has made, okay? 0%, 5%, 10%, 15%, 20%. The watermelon lemonade I made, it was floating up to here. Like this whole thing was just whoop, right up. It was, it was ridiculous. I'm gonna put that inside of there, okay? Let that start to sanitize. Then we're gonna go back over and start working on the brew itself, okay? Okay, we're gonna change the angle a little bit on this um, video, and I'm really sorry about that, guys. It's just the way that the camera mount works. Um, the video has to be horizontal, so I'm really sorry about that. I'm trying to move a few things around here. I'm working down in the basement, so everything's like really crammed together down here. There we go. All right, so what we're gonna do is I've gotta grab the funnel, because the funnel, is the very first thing and everything's been sanitized do not forget that everything's been sanitized okay so we're going to take the honey remember three pounds of honey okay i just buy this uh be proud pour honey all right it's made in the usa so product of usa and canada and afghanistan never mind that's made in three different areas but i thought it said usa that's why i picked it up i was like yeah usa but yeah whatever Nothing's ever made in America anymore. So we take it and we just pour it into here. And we let it do its thing. I'm gonna move this, sorry, so you can see what's going on. And it takes a little bit, it takes a long time for this honey to go down in this jar. So I'm gonna bring you guys back whenever this is all poured in, okay? And then I'll show you what we do with the empty bottle, okay? Ah. Okay, the honey is poured out of the bottle, all right, and there's still a bunch of honey left in there. So what I did is I went and got hot water, filled this up, and I'm gonna shake it, all right? That's all you're gonna do, is just shake this up. And what that does is it gets all the honey out of the bottle, all right? So you're not losing any. And it gives you a little bit of extra water in there for whenever you have to use this. That way you know you have enough, all right? So we're going to pour this in there and show you what happens. And there's still honey inside of the uh, funnel, so it's gonna take a little bit more oomph to get it out of there, okay? So I'm hoping that the hot water kinda helps move it along a little bit more. It's not really moving it along. So I'll bring you guys back whenever the honey is completely gone because you don't want to sit here and watch that drain. It might be kind of boring. Okay, we have poured the water honey into the jar and as you see, everything is separated right here, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we are going to take a lid. Once I get the rest of that honey out of there, I don't wanna waste any, there we go. We're gonna put a lid on top of this and we're gonna shake the bejeebers out of it to mix all the honey and everything together, okay? Hold on. There it is. All right, we are getting ready to shake this up. Shake the Ooh, I got a little on me. I didn't tighten the, the lid down tight enough. Hold on. That was a mistake. Whoo, I got all over me. One thing you wanna make sure, you tighten that lid down, all right? So we're gonna shake the bejeebers out of this. And, I mean, you just got to shake the living daylights out of it. But you also want all that carbonation in there, all right, because, or all the air bubbles and everything, because whenever the yeast goes in, that is going to help the yeast go, all right? So, just shake, to shake, to shake, 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 shake it up. We're going to wipe this bottle back down, because I do not want to have a sticky bottle. That just attracts bugs and stuff to this, and that's not cool, all right? As you see, it is it is starting to form together very nicely. Everything's starting to mix together. So just keep mixing it. And 
and there we go. It's all mixed together now. So what we're going to do now is clean off this jar, so hold on. Okay, so what we're going to do next, now that everything is mixed together, I've got this uh, wiped off now, got the funnel re-sanitized and put back on, we're going to start adding the blueberries, okay? So just slowly add the blueberries, because what happens what is, is, is it gets, you know, clogged in there, and you got to play push through, and that's always fun. That's the one problem with using a funnel and blueberries is they get stuck. So what I'm going to do is try to figure out how to get this done and then I'll show you the end result, okay? And as you can see, my hands are already blueberry. So let me get these guys out of here, get these guys in here, into here, and then I'll show you the next step, okay? Okay, for you guys, that was like a second. For me, it was like 10 minutes. I got all the blueberries inside of the... Um, tall boy and now with everything mixed up I want to do one more thing one more time Ooh, the honey jar thing works really good on that that's actually a really tight fit we're saving that um, we're gonna mix it up one more time get more carbonation in there more air all right and make sure everything's mixed together really good oh I like that all right and now we're gonna take our funnel that I just cleaned off again because it was full of uh, blueberries and everything. So I just wanted to re-sanitize it real quick. And now we're gonna take the water that's been sitting to the side. This is filtered water. Do not put tap water in here. Put filtered water in, all right? We're gonna fill it up to about right here, all right? Because if this thing bubbles over, we want enough room for gas a gas, the, the gas to come out. There we go. Cannot th talk sometimes. All right, I want to do that. Now, I want to take my yeast. I'm going to pour my yeast in. And then I want to take my water, clean out my jar as much as I can. Okay? Because you want all the yeast in there. Oh, I did not tell you guys what yeast I used as well. I need to tell, tell you that. All right, there we go, that's cleaned out. A little bit more water. Not much, right there's where we're stopping, okay? So you won't use the full gallon of water, all right? Because you need enough room for head space, okay? Because if this bubbles up, it could explode and you do not want that. So let me show you one more thing now. I took some sanitizer water and I put inside this right here, this lid right here comes off. And then you put the water in here, and then these lines, it says max on it. That's where you want to fill your sanitizer water to. Because this will bubble, and then allow air to come out, and then that is what takes the gas out. Also, you put the, cut, the cap on, sorry, and then if a bug would get in, a bug cannot go anywhere because it's got the water here. So it cannot go up through here. And there will be no bugs inside your jar, okay? So now that this is on, I got a nice tight seal on the bum. I'm going to take it again and just swirl it around, okay? Get that yeast incorporated in there. Get more oxygen in there. Get that yeast going. And that's it, all right? This is going to sit for three weeks, okay? It's going to sit for three weeks. And then at three weeks, I'll bring you back and I'll show you what we do, okay? We're gonna rack it at three weeks because that's normally about what it takes. Now what's gonna happen is the air is gonna come up, it's gonna come up through here, in through here, push this through here, air bubbles will be going through here, bubble through here, and pop out through here, okay? It's super simple, I love this idea. Um, this is how I make my wine anymore, this is how I do any of my alcohol. Uh, it's, it's awesome. Now we're going to be doing a, I don't want to spend money on actual alcohol in a store no more. I just, I just do this. This cost me $37 to get everything I needed. That was two bums, um, two airlocks, two tall boys, and uh, the yeast. I got to show you guys the yeast. Hold on. I got to find the yeast. I've only got one pack left. I was like, oh my gosh, I got to order more wine yeast. There it is. It all comes in a box, and I'm just like, I love it. 
So I use this right here, the lavenment, the lavavin. La I'm gonna call it lavavin. I don't know what you call it, but I use this um, EC one 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 eight. It's out of Canada. This says it, it's it's supposed to only get like a like a ten percent, fifteen percent alcohol. I have got a thirty percent alcohol out of this. All right, so it you'll get whatever you get. Yeast can't read, so yeast is just going to do whatever it wants to do. All right, remember that lemonade, that watermelon lemonade one I made was a 30% alcohol, and I used that yeast. But I used sugar instead of honey, so that was different. So let's run through one more time what you got to do with this, okay? You need three pounds of honey, one gallon of water, one package of yeast in lukewarm water to get it ready, okay? Make sure everything is sanitized with your 10 star okay and it's just a read the instructions on it. it'll tell you exactly how much to use per container okay I use a giant bowl and I sanitize everything in my giant bowl now you can take a reading of this which I did not do beforehand so you can get an estimate on how much alcohol you might get but I don't do that because I might it might read out a five and it might jump all the way to a fifteen, all right? Or it might read out ten and it somehow it goes down to a five. So I'm just I just like to leave it and set it and forget about it and whatever it, what happens to it happens to it. That's how I do it. Um, we're gonna I'm gonna now this one is the first one I'm gonna show you guys. I'm gonna bring you back whenever I make my um, apple pie wine in a couple days. We're gonna do that one, okay? I've just got to. Um, kind of figure out the recipe that I want to do and I need some I got some apples upstairs I want to bake them and I'm really thinking about making a boucher honey that's whenever you boil your honey but I don't really want to go super hard on the boil so I'm not 100% sure on how I want to do it okay I'm still trying to tweak that recipe a little bit so whenever I figure it out I'll bring you guys back for that one and what we're gonna do with this is it is the 30th today of July this will be ready for um, Christmas. This one and the apple pie will be ready for October, Christmas, stuff like that. And that's why I'm doing this now. Because it, it takes a while for it to sit, clear up if you want it to clear up, um, and everything. So I'm going to let it sit for a three weeks. And then we're going to come back and rack it into another vessel. And then if I have to back sweeten it, that is where you add more honey to it to make it just a little sweeter. Because everyone's... Um, taste buds is different so we're just going to make it to my taste buds and my family's taste buds okay it's not gonna to be to yours it's not gonna to be to anyone else's you have to make it and you have to figure out what you like okay so whenever we rack this in three weeks I will show you all the exact way that we rack it and what we do and if we have to back sweeten it what we have to do to back sweeten it also there's a chemical you need to add to back sweeten let me show you potassium sorbate Okay, you're going to add this to your brew after you rack it the second time, okay? After we rack it from here and we rack it into our next vessel, if we have to back sweeten it, we need to add this to it. And what that does is it stops the fermentation, okay? Because the second we will add more honey to that, which we're going to have to because when it, or, or, or I have to for my liking because I like it sweet. And I know from experience with this brew, I have to put a little more honey into it, probably about a pound. Um, so I have to add some sorbet to it so it'll stop fermentating because there's still yeast inside of this Even though we're gonna rack it. There's still gonna be yeast floating around in here. Okay in three weeks all this stuff should be on the bottom and Everything so the yeast and all the gooey, gooey nasty stuff will be on the bottom and then what we'll do is we'll take our um, funnel or not our funnel, but our um, siphon put it in here and rack it into our next thing and It's gonna be awesome. So I'll bring you back in three weeks for that. We'll show you what we do I hope you learned something from this, and if you did, put it down in the comments. Let me know if you want another brew made. I'll make it for you, and we can walk through it together, okay? So remember to survive strong, live long. God bless everyone out there. Hit that like, subscribe, notification bell, and I'm really sorry it's been a while since I've made a video. I've just been super busy. All right, y'all have a wonderful day, and God bless.